Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, I'm Alex Bennett, and this is The Ramble, and we go until midnight tonight. We go out to California, and we go out to Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Larry. Hey, Alex. Yes, uh, he... Uh, yeah, how have you, how have you been using your uh, your new uh, um, high speed internet? A little. I've been out. Of, I was out of town the past few days, so I haven't had uh, much time to look at it. But yeah, but I mean, when you've used gotten your mail and stuff, it's a lot easier, right? A little quicker, yeah. A little quicker. You had dial up. Yeah. <laughs> Crying out loud, Larry. Come on. The la- Maybe I was the last person on dial-up. Who knows? Could be. Well, you said there were like 50,000 in San Francisco? They said 50,000. I think 3 million in the country and 50,000 in San Francisco. Well, so. I, I can see the million in the country because there are some far-flung places where they've yet to put in high-speed Internet, you know? So I can see that. But you're in the middle of San Francisco. You're not in uh, in that kind of interland yeah. as it were this is a tech capital you would think everybody would be yeah yeah well, although from what i've read like uh like countries like korea and that have apparently much better internet than we do <laughs> really yeah much faster wow so, so how you doing okay a little kind of uh depressed about all the crap that's going on in the middle east but yeah, oh, that's enough to get anybody depressed. I just don't. I just don't understand why people can even do that to each other. You know, uh, I mean, it's just what 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 give what I don't know what possesses people to do that. What is it about mankind that is so lacking? Yeah, it's unbelievable. It when yeah, I just uh, you can kind of understand adults killing each other, but when they go killing children and stuff, it's just wow. I'm yeah, but sorry. I mean, just just that, just killing. Period. I mean, okay, we're going to lob bombs now into Israel, and we're going to kill a lot of people. Well, what what's that all about? You know, can't you solve your problems in other ways? You would think, but I think man is a very violent animal. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but it is it is in, it is very depressing. It is. Very it is. Depressing. Yes. Uh, and I mean, you know, I I I don't know what you do about it. You know, so it's uh, yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, it just uh, people ask me. You know, people ask me, you're you're Jewish. How do you feel about it? You know, well, I don't feel attached to Israel. Okay. My homeland is America. This is where I was born, and this is where I live. Uh, and uh, so I don't relate to Israel as my homeland. And I never have any desire to move there, uh, and less desire now because, you know, you, you somebody could lob a bomb into your backyard, you know? <laughs> I mean, it, it, you know, but nevertheless, I'm, I, I feel a, a, a real sense of... Um, pain for the people who live in that area who are dealing with this hatred you know and it's it's incredible it's just incredible um, so you never visited there no never visited there and have no intention of visiting there uh i just you know it ha- i have nothing to do with israel i'm jewish but that doesn't make it my homeland this is my homeland I was mm-hmm. I, I was born in what they call the diaspora. The diaspora is uh, Jews spread out all over the planet, you know, instead of in one place where they can get you. <laughs> well, no, but I that, never heard that phrase before. Well, that that was a theory of the um, Jewish socialist Bundes in America, and they were um, Jewish and and very radical. They were um, in uh, my. Uh, 
what is my former father-in-law was uh, the head of the Bundes in uh, in in uh, Europe. And uh, oh. he has a whole story and everything. He could have been the first prime minister of Israel if he chose to be a, um, a what do you call it? A uh, uh, gee, what, what's the, what's the what's the politics in Israel? I'm my my mind's just going. It's just incredible. Um, but uh, it, 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 they, you know, it's just uh, I I just never went along with the. You know the politics of Israel, and uh, so therefore, uh, I got to know these Jewish socialist Bundes who didn't agree with uh, that. God, what was the? What, like, I'm, I'm I'm really f- screwed up here. I, I maybe it's too early in the day or something. <laughs> but I, you know, usually in a discussion of Israel, I can come up with this term immediately. Um, but it's the politics of Israel, whatever that is. And it was the politics that sent them there. And uh, my father-in-law was not one of them. He was a Jewish socialist Bundist. And they believed that if you were going to prevent another thing from happening to them like happened in World War II with Hitler, you can't all be in the same place at the same time. Okay, because then they know where to get you. If you yeah. spread over the face of the earth, Jews will survive. If you put them in one area, Jews will not survive. So, that was the, one of the reasons behind the interstate highway system was if we spread America out, they can't bomb us all at once. Yeah, well, that, that makes some good sense, right? Yeah. But, you know, uh, so, I mean, Jews are spread out all, all over the world. And uh, I, I believe in that. I think that that, is, in essence, is a very good philosophy. So, you know, but Israel said, ah, let's put them all in one place. All right. So th- that, that's, a, that's one problem. I mean, there are several problems with what's been going on in that part of the world. I mean, you realize that's been, ever since the state of Israel was created in 1948, um, uh, it has always had this problem, always been somewhat at war. And uh, it's a constant problem. And never, Exactly. And, and no, one, no, no one has ever solved it completely. Um, it has seemed like it had been fairly quiet for a few years, so I thought, oh, maybe things have calmed down, but uh, apparently not. Uh, no. No, no, they haven't calmed down at all. In fact, uh, they've you know they've stayed, they've gotten worse at times. They had the you know the uh, war with Egypt and so on and so forth that went on at one point, uh, and the it, it, what do they call it? the Yom Kippur War, uh, and and so I mean it really um, it's just nothing, and nobody's really worked at solving it, you know. Every president that comes along says, I'm going to solve it. And then he finds out it's an impossible situation to solve. And uh, I, think, I think what should happen is the people there, the Palestinians and the, uh, uh, and the people in Gaza and so on, should say, hey, Israel has been here long enough that it's a matter of fact. You know, it, it just exists. And there's nothing you're going to do about it to change it. Um, so you know it, it's uh, and, and so knowing that there should be some kind of accommodations on Israel's part to accept the recognition of Palestine and of the people in Gaza and try and start some kind of dialogue, which has really never been uh, gotten going. I think at one point Yasser Arafat, if I remember correctly, see I remember all these other names, I just can't remember this one term. Yasser Arafat, <laughs> Yasser Arafat brought the Jews and the Palestinians together and created a solution. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the, it's, it never stops. It never stops. And uh, it's a, if, if you say, well, this just happened today, hey, it's part of the problem that's been going on for, since 1948, you know. Yeah. It's just a continuation of it. But uh, it's nice to know you read the news. Uh, yeah, well, it was kind of hard to miss this one. So it was kind of <laughs> yeah. 
Um, yeah, but uh, it, 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 boy, I wish I could remember that that term. The Israel's it's a term for, it, for what? Israel's politics are based on boom, and then my mind yeah. my mind goes blank. That's strange because that's one term I really really use a lot, and when I'm discussing this subject. Oh, boy, I'm going. Senility is setting in, Larry. <laughs> who, who knows? Well, it happens to all of us. So where have you been working? I was doing some work with uh, Felipe down in the valley, uh, some 1,200-seat theaters, which he sells out. So. Yeah. So those are, those are fun. It's so. interesting. You know, here's a guy who's uh, Hispanic, basically Hispanic comic, mm-hmm. Latin comic. And uh, he plays to a Latin audience, I would imagine. I, you know, I can't. Pretty say. much, yeah. 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 And yet he gets the whitest guy in America <laughs> to be his opening act. Well, I don't do all his. He's uh, he's out. Pro- I, he must do forty weeks a year. I don't do that many with him, but uh, yeah, he spreads the work but around. Why, but what is uh, it about you that he feels? Is a good opening. I mean, I know you're a good opening act, but you know, for, uh, for that he crowd. worked with. Uh, I just happened to work with him by accident right after he'd won Last Comic Standing about ten years ago, and he just he seemed to like me a lot. So, yeah. Well, I mean, I guess, I guess you're, you're a good opening act for anybody. You know, and you open. Yeah, I like to, I like to do short sets, so it works out well for me. So. You open for Dana Carvey. Carvey, yes. I just saw it. He just sent me a picture when he won. He won the competition in 1977 when he'd been doing comedy for six months. And be, standing behind him is Robin Williams. <laughs> it's a very strange photo. I'll send it to you. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. I I have I have a great picture myself. Uh, which is uh, kind of interesting. Um, it, it's a picture of me, and uh, it's uh, let's see here. It's it's Robin Williams, uh, Dana Carvey, uh, Jerry Seinfeld. Wow! Right. Uh, Kevin Pollack, I believe, is in there. I think I've seen this picture. Yeah, and then me. And Michael Pritchard. Okay, yeah, that's a great. And that was I was always trying to figure out what that picture was from. That was from a, a thing that we did for the Special Olympics, uh, and uh, everybody was there appearing uh, to do a big comedy show to raise money for the Special Olympics. And this would have been long before Seinfeld sitcom. Right. I just found the word I was looking for. Zionism. <laughs> okay. Oh, I, God, I've heard that one. <laughs> You've heard that one, yeah. <laughs> yes. I had to look it up here. I just went. It's like I had a. Bl- it was like a blank in my head, and it was. It's terrible. I, I don't. Well, I get a lot of those. You do get those. Oh boy. Well, yes, I know. I used to be like really fast. At, you know the jumble that puzzle in the car on the paper. Yeah. I could just whip through that so quickly, and now I've slowed down so much. So. Well, I do still do crossword puzzles. I still do those. I do the New York Times crossword puzzle. I have a whole thing of them. I do the Mondays. They're the easiest. Tuesdays That's a little the harder. One, yeah. Then you get to Wednesday, they get even harder. I've gotten all the way up to Thursdays. Uh, Friday, yeah, Fridays, I start losing it, and uh, Saturday, forget it. Sunday is not really hard, supposedly, but it's huge. It's, I don't like that. It's huge. Yeah. I like the Saturday one. I can sometimes get that, but well, yeah. but I think basically I'm probably Thursday smart, as they say. You're thir- Thursday smart. Yeah. I see. Thursday smart. Uh, yeah, but I mean, it, it's uh, you know, it's a, a pretty uh, uh, something I do because it it keeps the brain going. Yeah, supposedly uh, Bill Clinton and John Stewart can do like the Saturday one, like in three minutes or something. Uh, yeah, yeah, in pencil, in in yeah. ink, in ink. Yeah, yeah right. Um, no, I I heard that John Stewart could do the thing, uh, could do the Saturdays and everything, like the 
quit. I don't think you can do them in three minutes. I mean, I can't. I can't write that fast. Um, yeah, it takes me a couple hours. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I use uh, I use the computer. I use a iPad version of it, and I have to literally type them in. But I mean, I, I don't three minutes. Wow, wow! I three just, or six, something like insanely a quick yeah, amount of time. Yeah, I could see doing it. Um, uh, it takes me about thirty minutes. <laughs> I know. I'm such. I feel so terrible. Thirty minutes. Uh, now that you tell me what they do it in. Yeah, yeah, it makes you feel like uh You still do the you do the jumble every day? I do the jumble, yeah. Yeah. Do you still subscribe to a newspaper? I buy newspapers, I don't subscribe. Uh, you don't subscribe, but you buy them every day? Yeah, and no, maybe a couple of days a week cuz I don't like the early crosswords Monday and Tuesday are too easy and yeah. Now the Mar- the Marin IJ now costs three dollars, which <laughs> seems a little high for a thin paper. The Independent Journal costs that much now. Yeah. Wow. Wow. It's still publishing, huh? They're still publishing. I don't know who reads them. Well, you know, a newspapers now are pretty much out there digitally. You can you can get them on your computer. You can, but uh, you I like the I like the I like to hold the paper and uh, actually read it. So. Uh, 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 there is something about the physical holding of a newspaper yeah. that's wonderful, but most people in the future will not know that thing of uh, you know the tactile use of a of a newspaper. And in New York, they used to have in New York the New York Times used to be what was it eight columns wide. And now it's only six, I think. But it was really a big newspaper. It was really wide. If you held the thing up, you know, open, uh, it it pretty much took up a major field of view. And what they had were instructions on how to fold the newspaper so you could read it by folding it certain ways so you could see this page and then read the article. And then you could fold it another way and it always remained a, a certain smaller size. But it was a folding technique. And I, I, I never got to know how to do that. But a lot of people did that. You'd see them yeah. on the subways with the t- paper all folded up. Well, now it's not as wide. So, you know, it's not, and none of the papers are as wide as they used to be. What papers are still going in San Francisco? The Chronicle's still there, right? The Chronicle, which the I think the digital version is called SF Gate. Yeah. And there's uh, they had the Examiner, which was got to be a free paper for a while. Yeah. Is it? But still- that actually had the New York Times crossword, which so I'd always pick that up, and now that's gone. So. Is, is it? Is it? It's not around anymore. I think might, they might have it for a couple of days a week, but they got it got so bad they deleted the crossword puzzle. Because you know the Examiner, in case you don't, you know from history, was the Hearst newspaper. Right. That was Hearst newspaper in San Francisco, and it was the top newspaper in San Francisco for years and years and years. And then uh, the Chronicle started taking over, started getting a lot more view, uh, buyers. And uh, they had people like Herb Cain, who was a big columnist there, and so on. So they had a lot of reasons for people to buy that newspaper. Eventually, the Examiner gave up. Didn't they sell? Did they sell to the Chronicle at one point? Uh, I don't know if the Chronicle, but it's been sold to several different people over the past few years. Yeah. But you don't see it on you don't see it on the newsstands anymore. I think they have it like a couple of days a week now on the, as a free paper. Wow, wow, what a! And there used to be didn't most cities used to have like four or five newspapers? Well, I, when I grew up in San Francisco, okay, you had this is when I was a kid. This is nineteen forties. Okay, you had the Chronicle, you had the Examiner. You had the San Francisco Call Bulletin, which oddly, that's the one I was thinking which of. Which yeah. oddly enough was a pink-colored paper, pink or orange-colored paper. I know that sounds strange. 
Yeah. Uh, but that was to make it look different than the other ones. And then there was the Scripps Howard newspaper, which was the San Francisco, oh, God, what was it called? You had the Call Bullet, and then you had the, well, there was one other, okay? So you had four newspapers. And some of them were morning newspapers. I think uh, uh, the... Yeah, they were morning and evening papers, the exam- right? The Examiner was not evening, but they came out in Exa- the af- afternoon. Af- afternoon. Um, uh, the Examiner was a morning newspaper, and then the Chronicle, I think, was an, a, an afternoon newspaper. The Call Bulletin was an afternoon newspaper. And then the other newspaper, the Scripps Howard newspaper, which I can't remember the name of now, uh, was uh, I think I think they were all afternoons. The only morning paper was the Examiner, and I think nobody else wanted to be a morning newspaper because they didn't want to compete with them. And then later on, the Chronicle started releasing the paper earlier in the day. That's what I think started to happen, and that's when they started competing a lot. So, yeah. The history of San Francisco newspapers, something that anybody in any other town doesn't even care about it, and I don't know why. <laughs> Can you imagine though, getting printing a paper up and then distributing it? That must have been so much work. <laughs> oh, it still is. I mean, here in New York, we still get the uh, we we get the uh, the digital version of the New York Times every day, and then on the weekends we get on we get the Saturday and Sunday New York Times. And then uh, that's that's how we're subscribing to it now, but I I think uh, you know in the future it's all going to be all digital. There's no there's everything they can do with a regular newspaper they can do with a digital version, and it's just as accessible. It's just as easy to read. I mean, there there are, I think two versions of it. It's more digital version, and then the other one is more of a a kind of physical version that looks like the paper itself okay does that make sense yeah Yeah. so that's what's happened but but the fact that newspapers are just going by the wayside is just so sad it is they were pretty much killed by uh, craigslist were they killed by craigslist i don't think that's what did it well newspapers made their money from their classified ads when the subscription oh, and then uh, well that's true that's true yeah but you know the classified ads i don't know if they were exactly the same as um as craigslist um i'm trying to think what well i guess i guess it would hurt their classifieds. yeah everything you put in a paper was on craigslist so. yeah it would hurt their classifieds um and then uh, uh and then you got some smaller papers here in New York. I, do we still have the Village Voice? I have no idea. But the Village I've Vo- heard of that one. <laughs> the Village oh, Voice. It was a, oh, it was a great newspaper. It came out on Wednesdays. And we used to just have a really good time with that. Yeah, that was a good one. Um, and it was kind of like the hip newspaper. It was kind of like the avant-garde newspaper. And it... Uh, it was around for years. It was bought up. It was bought up by uh, Rupert Murdoch, and he bought up ru- everything. I guess, and he, and he ruined it. <laughs> you know, it just, no, sh- no I, shock there. I think he finally sold the thing off. You know, because he didn't. Yeah. You know. But anyway, uh, how times change, huh? You know. Yes. Tell you one thing that hasn't changed, and mm-hmm. you're lucky you weren't here this weekend. We had the the Blue Angels. Yeah, that's what I heard. I somebody told me about it. Oh my God, it's so annoying. It's I like, know. Uh, you, I'm glad you're another person that finds it annoying. It's like it's like having when they go over to your house. It's like a it's like there's a leaf blower in your ear. It's full volume. It's just, well, it, it, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's horrible. And uh, I, you know, but you and I are considered party poopers. You know, I know. I mean, people. Everybody I, goes, oh, how can you be against the Blue Angels? I mean, I tell people the Blue Angels wanted to take me up with them once. You know, let me sit in the back seat. And I turned them down because I had been putting them down on the air like crazy. And they just wanted to. <laughs> Reach out to me and help me understand, and they'll, they'll give me a flight on the back seat of a of, of a Blue Angels plane, 
And I said to myself, I know what's going to happen. I'm going to go up there, and they're going to do everything they can to make me vomit. You or know. hit the eject button. <laughs> yeah, right. But, no, they just, uh, they, you know, they loop around and all that. I don't think they planned on doing that with me, at least. But that's my, that was my great fear, you know. I'm sorry. I don't want you to turn this plane upside down. It's not planes do not fly upside down. They fly <laughs> up right side up and straight ahead and they're going to whatever destination I want to get to. Well, I just looked at the, t- well, the clock on the wall, uh Larry. Uh, <laughs> we've uh, we've ended this before your uh, allergies started catching up. Yeah, that might been I've been taking this uh natural stuff called quercetin which actually has worked and i hadn't haven't taken it for a few days so the allergies came back oh okay well take it then yeah i'm gonna get back on it yeah ladies and gentlemen as always larry bubbles brown thanks larry see you later alex now it's not here. this is gabnet the great american broadcast network talk like you've never heard it before oh boy i, I really uh, have been uh, for some reason there's a uh, it goes up and it makes noise and it uh, i'm having troubles tonight well i always have trouble so you know <sighs> nothing works right anymore it, both physically and equipment wise and i've been thinking about going to a uh, two mi- gigabyte bandwidth all right, uh, because they're offering it. And I've been thinking about it because just make everything faster. But I'm beginning to think about not even doing this anymore. So why do I want to go to a faster bandwidth so I can fail at a better speed? You know, anyway. So let me see here. Let's see here. We've got a bunch of people that want to come on right now. Not a lot, but enough. Enough quality people, as a matter of fact, so that uh, uh, there's uh, Charlie Wallace and there's, uh, um, of course, uh, Brian Neary and, of course, Josh uh, Wheeler. Uh, Let me just, uh, let me see here, let me bring in Alan here so he can pester us. Do you have to? Yeah, we do. (laughs) We do. I mean, you know. Oh, Alan! (laughs) Yeah. Uh, so it, 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 uh, it, we we well, we had somebody to pester us last night, and he didn't pester us last night. So well, it wasn't Alan? Yeah, it wasn't on. I just got done watching the show. Oh, you weren't here last night? <laughs> no. <laughs> That's what was going right with the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Record viewing. And, and, and in place of me, you had Charlene. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, yes, yeah. yes, we had Charlene. Always, always, always love having Charlene on the show. Does Charlene not have a funny shirt on tonight? Is it just like a normal shirt? Oh, no, he does. Bowling, uh, something right about your balls? What? Right up what my is, alley. W- right Bowling up. is right up my alley. Oh, I see. That isn't your best shirt ever. No. I'm, no. They can't all be gems. Huh? Exactly. They can't all be gems. Well, I, what? Why did I you mean, get? Think, why did you get bowling? Are you a bowling guy? Oh yeah, I used to bowl big time. Really? I took bowling. Yeah. I took bowling in college. Oh, I, well, by I the way, let me let me put Charlie. these people up here. I didn't do that. You gotta put our face up there. It's yeah. just your... I bowled thirty-seven games in one day once. Wow. wow. Really? Oh, well, yeah. I I took it in college because uh, I had to take an athletic thing i'd take pe of some sort yeah and uh so i took bowling i figured that was easy and what you had to all you had to do was you had to go down to this bowling alley and bowl i think it was 20 lanes worth of bowling in a in a semester yeah so i went down and i did 10 a day for two days and i was finished for the (laughs) year i think that's the first shirt i actually got with you out you having to describe it what? <laughs> what? That's the first shirt he's had that he hasn't had to explain this pie divided by under four. Yeah, all yeah, 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 yeah. Most, most of his both. most of his shirts are meant to make us feel less than we are. Yeah, that's how Charlie <laughs> is. 
Charlie yeah. wants to, they're mostly to promote science. Charlie wants yeah. to be the smartest guy on the panel all the time. Nobody, nobody worries. Nobody but, thinks about. But you know what? It's so life. funny because he's so smart, you know, intellectually. But then he's got the cowboy thing, so it sort of balances out. <laughs> the life is like that. What do you mean he's got the cowboy thing? The cow. See the thing in the corner that the the gang related stuff. Cowboy, cowboy nation. nation. Oh boy. And he's so intelligent on one side, nation. but then he likes the cowboys. So it's. <laughs> We mean as a team. Yes, that is a team. So that, that like cancels out all the smartness of him. Well, what, what's wrong? What was, what's wrong with that? <laughs> I don't know, Charlie. You, want, you can take the whole hour. <laughs> hmm? Brian likes the Philadelphia Eagles. Well, I know he likes the Phil. He likes the Philadelphia yeah, Eagles. Yeah, they're rivals, so that's they're, they're big rivals. Oh, I see. Cowboys. Okay. Yeah. Well, just warn me the night that they're both playing each other, and I won't do a oh, show. Oh yeah, it's coming up. Two times coming up, yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 Every year. Every year. Mm. Yeah. Do you guys want to make a bet on the next one? I don't. Well, Josh has got a good team too. Josh is the Bengals. He's got a good team going. Yeah. Well, uh, oh yeah. Why didn't I know he liked the Bengals? <laughs> it's all over his. It's all over his wall. It says yeah. Bengals on his chair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't have anything to say about that, Josh? Not much. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. I can't say I have a favorite football team. I, I, I well, let me see here. Who would I have as a favorite football? I guess the 49ers would be my favorite team, right? Yeah. Yeah, right? I'm sure Kevin would. Or, or, or the Oakland Raiders. Uh, <laughs> I'm not Oakland again. See, I knew I knew I was pulling a joke. Oh, because they're, they're, they're now and and correct me if I'm wrong. They're now the Las Vegas Raiders. Very good. Why would a team move to Las Vegas? Because there are two reasons why you don't play games in Las Vegas. Right. One is it's Las Vegas. Okay. Second reason is it's so damn hot in that city. During f what would be, I guess, yeah. partial part part of the football season, the, why would you want to play in that kind of heat? I never could right. understand why anybody wanted to play in in Houston. Yeah, like, they have closed stadiums. Yeah, they're they're it's fine. Does uh, Houston still have a closed stadium? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It can be. Is, they tear down the. Do they tear down the Astrodome? No, well, I don't know. It was there a couple of years ago. Well, I think they did, but I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. I think they did. We'll find out. Because I was there when they first, uh, they first uh, in the second year, huh. that they played in the in the Astrodome, and that was the year that they they found out in the first year they built this big you know dome with the windows and everything like that, so the sunlight could come in. And it was a brilliant idea, except there was one thing they didn't count on. And that was, if somebody popped a high fly and they went up to go catch it, they couldn't see it because of all the girders. Minnesota, yeah, Minnesota had that issue. So they then had to paint in the windows mm -hmm. so that they could see the ball. And then guess what? All the grass died. <laughs> Oh. So then they had to invent phony grass, and they came up with AstroTurf. Mm. And that's how AstroTurf was born. And I went to a press conference in which they announced this new wonderful thing called AstroTurf, and I got to walk on it. I was one of the first people to ever walk on AstroTurf in the Astrodome. Hmm. Yes, Charlie? Uh, the Astrodome is still there. It has been declared a state historical designation and cannot be torn down now. Wow. Okay, so what do you do with it? Do you turn it into a giant snow globe? A giant snow globe? Have... Turn it into a giant snow globe? No, I think they tried to use it as a shelter, or they did use it as a shelter for one of those hurricanes. One of the hurricanes, yeah. Yeah, the hurricane. That's Isn't that where Joel Olson said no, they couldn't use his place? Osteen, <laughs> yes. yeah. Yeah. Yes. But here's the what, thing what? I don't. here's the thing I don't get. I mean... Why? Why are you keeping it uh, up just because you you made it a national? What was a national? Yeah, it's, it's, now it's treated like it's a statue. You can't tear it down. 
that's a pretty big statue. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah I, I just would think that. This that's, is a big, pretty big state, so what can I say? That makes no sense to me. Makes no sense to me. Uh, it's a historical site. You can't historical it. site. What's it? His, what's historical about it? It was the first dome stadium. Oh wow! And astroturf was invented. And, and by yeah. the way, because I was there when it all kind of started, I was, I was there in the second year that they yeah. were playing games in there. Um, and by the way, the reason they did the dome was because it was so hot in Houston yeah. that you couldn't play baseball there. And I think they finally did start playing baseball outdoors, didn't they, at one point? Finally? Well, yeah. I mean, the, the Rangers. Mm hmm. Well, the and Rangers, well I mean, they, they can play outdoors if the weather's okay. Yeah, but when the weather's. 100 degrees and 80% humidity, nobody's playing outdoors. Yeah, well, folks, I mean, I, I've lived in Houston. I know what a hot day in Houston is like. Yeah. That's why they built. That, that. I think that was one part of the agreement to create the Houston Astros that they were going to build a dome stadium. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they have a roof stadium now, so do the Rangers. I mean, the, they can play in anything they want. It's about can they get people to come watch the game? Yeah. Uh, whether more than can they play in it, but. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, they, one of the, one of the, uh, roof. one of the issues they have with, if you're, uh, Las, if you live in Las Vegas and you're a Las Vegas Raiders fan, is that people like Josh, like maybe the the Bengals would play the Raiders at the Raiders place. So all these people say, hey, all Josh's friends say, hey, let's go and take a trip to Vegas and we'll watch the game. <laughs> and so they have more people there from the away team than they have for their own team because people use that as a trip and they buy tickets. and Yeah, yeah they're having a lot of trouble there with attendance on the uh... – football side yeah and what football I imagine side? it'll be worse when they, when they move a baseball team there I don't really see yeah. what, what are you talking about now oh uh, they're planning on moving I'll a baseball say, team uh, yeah. they're probably going to move the Oakland Athletics there probably There's, they got all but far. it's all but done the yeah, Oakland A's are where where are the Oakland A's moving to Vegas Las Vegas, Vegas. Why, why, why why is, why because is, they're morons Money. They're morons. Money. That's the bottom line. Money. We come to your Money. game tomorrow, but we're leaving today. What? I mean, come on. Money it's a very transient town. Group. It's a very transient town, and you're not going to get a large fan base in those in the in a, that transient a city. Exactly. Yeah, well, like Josh said, and, you know, if the Cowboys ever play there, I'll probably go. <laughs> they must have guaranteed a certain amount of money they were going to pay the Oakland A's to go there and stay there and to survive there so that if oh, they, even if they lost money. Oh, that's a big stink. I've been involved in that stink since they started it about a year and a half, two years well, ago. Well, Mr. Stink, tell us all about it. Uh, Oakland doesn't want to have anything to do with them. I've been, I've been listening to city council meetings. Oakland and the uh, the A's have been pissing on each other for about a year and a half now, mm -hmm. and Oakland was all we're rooted in Oakland until they you know they built they designed a stadium and everything out at the harbor, mm -hmm. beautiful stadium looked right at the uh, the Giants Stadium right across the bay looked mm -hmm. beautiful, mm -hmm. all ready to go, and then all of a sudden they said, eh, we're going to go to Vegas. And then they pissed on. Oakland because I think there was a stink about the um, the housing out there and um, they started arguing about what kind of um, low income housing was going to go out there then the city decided uh, well you're not going to put enough low income housing out there and then the money started coming up and they wanted more money and they finally said oh Vegas has given us a better deal and they went out to Vegas and sold them a, a bill of goods. And the government out there, this was another real weird thing about it. Because the last minute, in the last couple of weeks of what went on out there, they sold them a bill of goods. Mm -hmm. And it was not going to go through. And then all of a sudden, their council said, oh, yeah, well, we're going to let it go through. And they had a, a, a mock stadium on nine acres which there's no way you can build a stadium on nine acres said so this is the way it's going to be it's going to be a beautiful stadium on the corner of this da 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 and when it was done 
um, when they said, okay, and they passed the bill, they said, by the way, that's not going to be our stadium. We're going to have to build a bigger one somewhere else. On the, you know, It's going to be a bigger stadium and blah, blah, blah. It was a shit show. And now all it's come down to now is the owners have to agree to it. And, of course, they're probably going to agree to it because they're going to get all the money no matter what happens. And the A's will probably still have a shit team. And they'll whatever happens is the owners will get more money in the end. And it doesn't matter what happens with the Who A's. owns the A's now? It's not owned by the... The Fisher uh, family. The Fisher, Fisher family. Because before, Fisher family, Before yeah. it was the... Uh, uh, the Levi people. Um, the um, uh, yeah, well, yeah. And he was uh, my good friend. I can't remember his name now. Yeah, but he was my and there good was somebody friend. after that, but um, but he was my good friend, and he used to like uh, get me like uh, seats right next to the dugout. Yeah, and they were a good. They were good owners because that's Al when Davis? I had my season ticket. No, 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 that's, no, the, no, no. that's the Raiders. That's Oh, what do I know? I'm and they screwed. They screwed up that stadium too. <clears throat> well, that stadium was really a good stadium until Al Davis got a hold of it. Wasn't uh, what was that movie they did about the Raiders? I mean, about the uh, uh, Billy Ball. Uh, the uh, the yeah uh, the what do you call it? the uh, Money Ball. Money Ball. Money Ball. Money yeah. Ball. Yeah. Yeah. Money Ball. I'm sorry, don't Billy. Yeah. Ball. But it was Money about Ball. Billy Ball. Yeah. No, it yeah. wasn't about Billy Ball. It was about it was about. Oh. Uh, uh, well, now you're confusing Billy, it was me. about I, Billy I, Bean and the way Billy Bean ran the team. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And it was there was some kind of formula he used or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it was that. a low-budget formula, have cheap, uh, a cheap budget with good players, and, and it actually worked for a little bit. And he was almost, it was almost working, what, seven, eight years ago. They were going to the playoffs with low-budget players mm -hmm. and doing a pretty good job of it, but every time... They got good. They traded everybody away. And that's what they've been doing for the last three or four years. They were starting to get good. Oh, look, we got some good players. Trade them away. Trade them away. Trade them away. That drove me nuts because I'm a big A's fan. Yeah. Well, I used to go, I used to, go to the games uh, occasionally. Uh, I, in fact, I, once I threw out a pitch at the, uh, at the yeah, Oakland Yeah, I remember. A's. It, it, I remember you, that. Were you there when I did it? No, I wasn't there. I'm, I you, might have been there. I don't remember. Me, you didn't see me uh, hit the uh, umpire in the balls, did you? The balls, no. That's the, I remember <laughs> yeah. you talking about it. On the yeah. Radio, yeah, it was not. Because I, I had weekend, I had weekend season tickets from the uh, 70s up through the World Series. Well, I've talked about this before. But, you know, they say, okay, you're going to throw the ball from the mound to the batter. Okay. And you think, oh, this is a, well, how, I can do that. I mean, I never pitched a ball much in my life, but I knew I could do that. And then you get out there, and you don't realize how far 90 home feet, base six inches is. is a long way. Home, home <laughs> base is from this mound. Or 60 feet. And I'm, I'm standing there just scared crapless that I'm not going to be able to throw this ball that far. You know. But I managed to make it. I managed to do it. And uh, somebody, I guess, hit hit the ball, and it went, you know. But I, I, I at least got it. I felt like, oh, I got it to first base. God, the, the yeah. guy that hit the ball. What happened to the ball? What? Where were you? I thought you said, I thought you, said you hit the the guy in the ball. I'll fire in the I ball. think I think that was when I first we were doing a a, a test pitch. Oh. And I hit him in the balls. Yeah. And then when I went uh, to really one ball makes two balls. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so that, I that, that isn't the only time that's happened. I've seen that they've got a, oh, yeah. a montage yeah. or whatever of people hit. Yeah, they have a ten minute there. video of it in YouTube. Yeah. yeah. Oh really? Am that's I there? Funny, yeah. Am I there? People, I don't know if you're there, but people seem to love <laughs> watching the umpire. Watching the umpire get nuts. hit with the ball, especially yeah. in that area. What do you look up? Um, umpires getting hit in the that's nuts? Is that what it probably? What the, Charlie, don't you oh, wear a cup or something? Do you wear anything? I'm protective? sure the major league umpires do. Yeah. Yeah. But this is softball. It's oh, the ball so soft. slow you can get out of the way. I've never which, which, nuts. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Which is the softball? The ball coming at your balls or your <laughs> ball? Didn't they just get one the other night or last couple of weeks? I think a foul tip went went, went into one of the umps nuts the other night or a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. Don't they wear cups? Yeah, I'm sure they yeah, do. Yeah, well, when you get hit by that ball at uh, 100 miles an hour. Yeah, off a bat. 
Well, I, uh, uh, the, the guy I knew, I'm trying to remember his name now. Jeez. The Haas, Wally Haas. Wally Haas, Wally that's Haas. who it was, yeah. yeah. Okay. The Haas fan. So I, I knew Wally, you know, and, and Wally said, well, anytime I want to come out to a game, just call my secretary and we'll get you seats, you know. So I tell my girlfriend, who's got really hot for baseball, you know, hey, we're going to go to the baseball game. So I call out and they say, yeah, well, okay, we'll put tickets out here for you. And she brings her little baseball glove. I mean, she figures if she might, she might catch a ball, right? Yep. So now we get out to the park, and they lead us up to our seat. They lead us up to our seat, and then they lead us up to our seat, and then they lead us up to our seat. And by the time we're sitting down, our back is against the back wall of the top tier. Ooh, wow. And I went, Gee, my good friend Wally really did right <laughs> by me here. And she's looking at me like, these are really lousy seats. I said, I know. <clears throat> so the next day I go on the air and I do the story like I'm telling you now. And I said, I thought Wally was my friend and I wind up at the very top of the stadium. I said, I may as well have been watching a game of ants down there, you know. And so the next thing I know, I get a call from Wally's office. Wally wants to make it good. He, he, you shouldn't have gotten those seats because he left it up to his secretary, right? So this next time I bring my girlfriend, she's got her mitt with her again, and we are right behind the dugout. They are the owner's seats. Oh, okay. Wow. What's my girlfriend complaining about at the end of the game? I didn't catch a ball. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Here's two. Put your hand on them. Because there's glass in the front. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, uh, no, those were great seats to have, you know. Yeah. Uh, but he so he made good good buy it. But what, what happened to Wally and the family? They just, they were the Died. Levi Strauss people, right? They all died. They what? I'm not sure if they were Levi Strauss people. Yes, they were. Were they? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They were part of, part of the Strauss family. I, uh, you know. Uh, but uh, I don't know if they. I guess they sold it off or whatever. I don't remember what I'm, happened. I'm sure they sold it off. Otherwise, they'd still own it, right? Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know. But uh, uh, it's the same thing that way back when I was a Giants fan. I grew up with the Giants and I love the Giants. But Speck Richardson, when he owned that team, I did. They did the same thing, and that's why I jumped over to the A's. And he kept trading away all the good players, and it was a shit show. And you know. You get pissed off, and at least we had a choice then. Now you don't have a choice. Well, you know, the great thing about the A's was they weren't really a great team. Yeah. You know, so there was a, th you could, what was the word, what's the term I'm thinking of here? You could actually, you could actually root for them because yeah. you knew they had didn't have a chance in hell, and so you, they never disappointed you, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, and I mean, the when first they, few games that I was going to, there was only like 300 people in the stands, and then they, Hired Billy Martin. And it but, started, but there was a year. Really there was the year exciting, they. Yeah. There was the year they went to the World Series, and that was the year they were playing the New York, the, uh, um, the uh, San Francisco Giants. No, that was it. Was that was Tony Larusa when he came in? When he came in? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A's were in the World Series like seventy two. Well, 72. this is when the earthquake happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was eighty nine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was their nineteen ninety. Second. Four game sweep. Four game. Um, who who said? It, oh, you. Yeah, you, nobody said no. I think that's what it was. I don't know. Yeah. I got a hat downstairs. I can show it to you. <laughs> yeah. I got the newspapers. But that's when the earthquake happened. Was that World Series? What we called the yeah, yeah. the uh, cross bridge or whatever they call it. World Series. Bay Bridge Series. Yeah. Thirty-five years ago, I think something like that. Yeah, and luckily yeah. more Nine people would have died from that earthquake. The game was being played in San Francisco, and yep. if it was being played in Oakland, more people would have died. Why? Yeah, I went to the first two Why? games in Oakland because the, because the what's the highway, the freeway, the highway, in Oakland? the freeway that oh, went the down. cyber structure, the cyber, that's yeah, they yeah. leveled and they leveled both yeah. of them. But yeah. I was on both of those. I was on the Cypress and the Bay Bridge just after or just before it collapsed, yeah. because wow. I was making deliveries in the truck in San Leandro, mm -hmm. and I'd gone to the first two A's games, and the series, and I had series tickets for the whole series, mm -hmm. 
I'd gone to the first two games, and I wanted to see what was going on, so I said, screw it, I'm going to take the long way home. And I made my last delivery in San Leandro, and I drove over the Cypress, and I drove over the Bay Bridge, and I wanted to drive by um, Oracle, or whatever the hell it was called then. Yeah. And I wanted to drive by there, see what was going on. It was Candlestick. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> I wanted to see what was going on. You know, you can't really see, but I just wanted to drive by it because I was all involved. And there was no traffic. It was just dead. You know, and that 5 o'clock in the afternoon in Bay Area, traffic is like crazy. But there right. was no traffic. It was weird. And there was, it, well, there was no traffic because, because of the game. Because everybody was at the game or at a bar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And... And I was able to drive right on through. I mean, it took me from San Leandro to San Jose. So how, how long was it after you got across the, the Cypress? Well, by the time I got to San Jose, the earthquake hit, which was at 517. Okay. So you 505? 504. Five, five, no. I think it was 504, something like 504. that. 504. Something like that, yeah. Any, anyway. Yeah. And so it, was, it only took me what, a half hour, 40 minutes to get down to San Jose. Mm. Half hour, maybe. Yeah. In a semi, but if the so game had been played, no in, but if the plane had been played in Oakland, all those people would be on the Cypress still trying to get yeah. to the game. As a matter of fact, I knew a yeah, driver yeah. that was in there and got crushed. Well, I didn't know him, but he worked for the one of the terminals that I was at. Well, and you never never have a chance of knowing him now. No, yeah. he was pancaked. Yeah. So anyway, that's our. See, we we went fact, through. We his went truck through. in a lot of the pictures. Superior. Did truck you go line. through the Loma Prieta quake? Uh, uh, Alan? Yeah. Oh, you did? I was waiting, for, waiting for a pizza to be delivered. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. Okay. I'm watching the, the... And how about you, Brian? Were you in the Bay Area at that time? Yeah, it was my first week at this new job, and we had these uh, tables to work on, and they're really strong and cubicles around them, so you figure if anything collapsed, you're safe. Mm-hmm. And so right when the earthquake happened, I went underneath that, and I just see everybody running outside, and I'm like, "Oh my god, these guys are so stupid." Like, well, yeah. I don't, I, is outside more stupid than staying indoors? However, well, yeah. I just told them, "Hey, you know, if this building collapses, just come and get me. I'll be under the table, just waiting for you guys." Yeah, well, I think they always YouTube used to say, video they, of Brian under the table. They they do say they do say that if there's an earthquake, head for the door jams. Yeah, and you know what? Some people got killed standing in door jams during yeah. the Loma Prieta <laughs> quake. So if you, you know. can get to open air, it's good. Open you know, air is that, good. That's if you can get there. Yeah, because yeah, your the legs get real, open up. your legs get real wobbly when when the ground is shaking. Yeah, yeah. Well, we were in a car, you know, yeah. and we thought that uh, we saw started seeing the uh, the cables from the overhead uh, uh, power lines. Muni. Start mo- moving back and forth oh, like this, yeah. and I was feeling all of a sudden I was feeling like my car was. Uh, I, I tried to put on the brakes and the brakes wouldn't work. And the reason the brakes wouldn't work is the car was bouncing down the street. It was yeah. So not, you know I had my brakes on, you know, but they 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 didn't stop anything because it was bouncing. Yeah. So finally, we, we see people rushing out into the street, and we're go- I'm going, something's really weird here, because I'm bouncing, and the street is wobbling, and it turned out it was the earthquake, and uh, I was with my girlfriend, who I'd broken up with, and this was the first day we had gotten together to just hang out, and we were going over right. Divisadero, down into the other side of Divisadero, and I said, uh, we better turn around and go back home. So we turned around and we went back up, and then we come down. And as we're driving through the 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 uh, you know the uh, marina on the Visadero, uh, she's saying things like, "Look, that building is f- partially fallen down." And I said, "Well, look over there. That building used to be there, you know." And we're all of a sudden we're seeing all of a sudden. Then we pull up to the front of my apartment, and I've told this story before, but it's worth telling. The, the um, curb, we couldn't open the door on her side because the curb had come up higher than the door. You know, I mean, it was really something, really yeah. something. 34 years ago, last Tuesday, the 17th. It, really? Yep. Last, yeah. How many? 34 years 34 ago. 34 years ago, yeah. Wow, wow, wow. 
And then my girlfriend and I uh, stayed at my place that night, and we had broken up, but we had uh, we had really some of the best sex we had ha ever had. <laughs> and, I, and, and, and I've told this story before, too. I asked some psychologist once, I told him this story, that we just had this really incredible sex. I called it a rubble fuck, <laughs> you know? And, and I asked a psychologist about this and why the sex was so good. And he said, oh, well, that's very common in tragedies. That in, in big problems like this, you know, physical problems, earthquakes and stuff like that, even in, during war and whatever, there's a tendency to have sex because you want to procreate to maintain the species. It's a, it's a, it's a natural instinct you have. And that's why it's so good. And I've ever since then I've called it a rubble fuck. And I said, anytime you hear some major tragedy in the world, you know, some war going, on, Ukraine sex must be great. You know. I'm glad you said it. <laughs> yeah, well, no, well, but I'm serious. I was just thinking, you know, well, yeah. I better be careful. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, so that we 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 had a very nice night and uh and and we got that that brought us back together again, and then, we, then and then we knew as soon as we knew we were getting back together again, we were going to break up again. So you know that kept going on over and over, and it, I was in an endless loop of this relationship. Groundhog Day, huh? Got a Groundhog yeah, well, Day. Well, it was an infinite loop, which I would rather use that. That's a computer term, you know. But anyway, so how is everybody? Not bad. I hear Chesbro turned, huh? Chesbro oh, turned, yeah. and good for him. And my judge fined oh, yeah. Donald Trump five thousand dollars. That's it. Which is like thirty oh, cents. Yeah. Well, yes, he five thousand dollars. Also, it's warned him, right? Slap on the wrist, warned him that if he does it again, he's going to throw him in the clink. Yes. Oh, even more, even better. Make yeah. him pay your rent for Christ's sakes. Yeah, yeah. But you know, I mean, it uh, it it's really. Um, I, I'm proud of my judge. I really am. The only problem is I need him right now, and he's not available. You know. So. Uh, and Jordan backed out too. Uh, I know he lost his third vote, but did he? Jordan back backed out? out. Jordan yep. backed out. Yeah, yeah, he's Good gone. He's toast. Good for him. He's toast. Now, what are the idiots going to do? Uh, you know something. At this point, I mean, I do care because things, business, the business of the country has to go on, you know. Uh, I mean, I, the other day Biden was saying, and I'm going to send over to, with a, in his speech, he said over to Congress, uh, a bill appropriating uh, funds for the Ukraine and for Israel, and I'm going, in your wildest dreams, yeah. you know, who's going to pass it? You know, so um, I hope that they get something done so they can start passing some of these things, you know. Well, they'll be shutting the government down in November if they don't. Too. Well, I don't know how anybody could vote for the Republicans given this. Me either. I, I just don't understand. You know, they do this crap. I mean, if you had an employee who was this incompetent, what, you'd fire him, right? No. Yeah, the thing but. The thing me off is they're still getting their income while this is going on. Well, they always get their but, income. Yeah, well, you ought to stop their income, and these things that would change. Well, there's quickly. no there, there. There's no reason to stop their income because we do have a temporary budget. You know. Well, you can't pass. You can't call any bills for votes. Yeah, but I mean, the the, the the Republican people. Everybody in America should hate the Republicans right now. Okay, am I right, mm -hmm. Josh? In in previous years. Were this to happen, nobody would vote for them, right? Well, uh, they typically suffered from shutdown mania a little bit, yeah. But forget it's shutdowns, just it. just not being able to come up with a Speaker of the House. Come on, that's one of the easiest no-brainers there is. Yeah, it's not good. You know, you you, you uh, yeah. the new party, the party uh, gets the majority in the in the House, and then that party votes on it, and they get a new speaker. No big deal. Mm -hmm. Nobody argues about it. Doesn't take fifteen votes. When it comes time to vote, people have a short memory. Well, they're. Uh, I mean, it's pretty clear they're going to have to 
find someone who's not, you know, break right. I mean, well, he seemed to say that Patrick McHenry is his name. Yeah. It is uh was wasn't he in the Revolutionary War? Uh, Patrick <laughs> yeah. McHenry uh, is supposedly is uh, you know he's fine. He's kind of like. I mean, the Democrats, as far as I know, have made that offer, which was to present us with someone who was not, you know, nuts and will help you. And then I believe as part of all that, they've said, and then you got to handle your caucus. Like, we will work with you on things, but if we do this, you know, get you a speaker, then you need to get the Jim Jordans and the Marjorie Taylor Greens and them off their committees and off, off yeah. television. And stop the nonsense. Well, what I they, mean, they yeah they should mm -hmm. kick these guys to the curb, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what they should do is say, look, you come up, we'll vote for a Republican. You come up with a good moderate Republican, yeah. who who uh, everybody can be kind of happy with. Maybe not the, the radicals in the Republican Party, but who cares about them? And we'll even vote for him. So we'll make sure that person gets in. Yeah. And that's all they got to do, you know. They've got to, you know, have some assurances that they're not going to get worked. I mean, this goes on long enough. They're going to find 25 or 30 Republicans who vote for Hakeem Jeffries and make him Speaker of the House. And he, mm -hmm. he'll promise them a government shutdown will be averted and that they'll fund the defense and that they'll do a budget. And, mm -hmm. you know, and then they mm -hmm. won't do anything crazy after that. They won't pursue a... A vehement democratic agenda. I mean, there's mm -hmm. deals to be made either way you go. So, mm -hmm. but they're they don't seem interested in it right now because they can't settle their own internal differences among you know. No, but what, they're, they're dysfunctional. A handful of people, probably less than a dozen. I mean, the one thing you got to say about the Democrats: the Democrats aren't particularly dysfunctional. Not right now. They're, right? Well, they mm -hmm. seem fine right now. Yeah, I mean they don't have to really do anything right now because there's really nothing to do. Yeah, you know, they're kind of on you know paid leave at the moment. It, it's, Show up and not vote for a speaker and go it, to lunch. You know, and why they they even went along with this whole idea that one person, one person, yeah. could cause this problem. You know. Well, that was their own choice in McCarthy, you know. I mean, he wanted it so bad he was willing to take it under the worst of all possible conditions. Right, that's usually the kind of people you don't want in power and how that yeah. works. The guy that, slant, that that hit the thing and said that it's now open, the seat's open, about broke the hammer. That's, yeah. Pat, that's Patrick... Um, uh, it was a McCarthy McHenry, person. McHenry. No, it's... You know he isn't a McCarthy person. He's a very huh? much a, he's considered very much a moderate. No, but he was upset. That was he Patrick was a backer of McCarthy for a speaker. Yeah. 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 But he. But nevertheless, he's he, he's, consi he's considered he's considered a moderate, isn't he, uh, Josh? Yeah, I mean he's not one of their fire breathers. That's for sure. You know yeah. What I mean? yeah. He's not like Marjorie Taylor Greene. No. <laughs> right. I mean, I I don't know that you're going to get it confused with you know Maxine Waters anytime soon. <laughs> you know, you know. Is she? He's, he's not looking to impeach uh, Biden, and he's not looking to impeach Merrick Garland, and you know, it's not. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, it, it's that stuff's not going to go anywhere. Um, you know, I don't really think we need to impeach Joe Biden uh, when there's. You know, 25 days left until the government shuts down, right? I mean, hmm. you know, nothing nothing to see there. So he's uh, not one of those as far as I can tell. I mean, he seems decent. I, I don't really think he wants to deal with it. I mean, he doesn't really talk publicly or anything, you know. Isn't, um, there, isn't there a Republican? Isn't, really want isn't to there him. a Republican that the Republicans and the Democrats can agree on? And who would I mean, that be? That would seem to be the case, you would think. You know, or well, not the case, but a possibility, you would think. But, you know, but that's what I'm saying is I think the Democrats said, you know, we we can give you a, something that on the other side of it, we can all go out and proclaim wins. We're doing our jobs, you know, but what but, we uh, want it, is it, to guarantee us these people go away. Correct me if I'm wrong, Josh, but can't I characterize 
the Congress as a amateur show? Well, it is right now. Be, no, but, no cool but, all, but most of the time, except for the ones that have been there forever, you know, that these are people that come in for five minutes and the next mm. minute they're gone. You know? Well, it's always been very incumbent heavy in the last half century or so. So, I, I mean, you know, it, I don't think you often see large-scale change in, in the, the number of people with incumbency. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I'm wrong. I'm not the expert on that. But, I mean, I think it has a lot of incumbent multi-term people. But it's just the sad part is, is that some of the new people, first and second termers, who came in with Trump, are just crazy. And crazy is one thing if you're willing to, you know, try to achieve your craziness through the system. Mm -hmm. But they're they're not. They're they're I'm crazy and I don't like the system, so I'm going to break it so that you have to do what I want. Um, but that's not democracy, you know? Right. <laughs> right. It's not. I mean, you know, so, I mean, that's that's what I'm saying. I mean, you know, I, I mean, I, I don't know that I got specifics, but, I mean, I've heard multiple times on my way to work the last day or two on, you know, Morning Joe and CNN that, you know, that there are, there are spouses... And and children um, of c Republican congressmen saying that people are calling their phones and, and telling them, you know, on behalf of Jim Jordan, that if they don't vote for him to be speaker, they're gonna they're gonna you know take retribution. They're gonna beat him up or you yeah. know get him. I mean, you know, shit like that. So, I mean. And Jim Jordan didn't utter a word that I know of to try to put a stop to any of that. Do you know? I, yeah, I was and I think that's people. what you—you you got those middle of the road Republicans in there that would probably step and step up and think about being a speaker, but they have all these eight weirdos out there that are stirring the shit up that probably yeah. But if they could agree, step up for if, that reason, if they could get the Democrats to agree on a Republican, they right, could but they could push them over the edge. You know. well, what I'm saying is that there's there's some out there that probably would do that and probably would step up, but because of the nut jobs that are in well, there I, that are stirring this crap up, mm -hmm. yeah, they probably don't I, want to step up. I think, I don't know if it's as much as getting the Democrats to agree. I think the Democrats would agree. Yeah. They're just saying, as soon as you bring us someone, but when this happens, you've got to remove these people from your... Yeah structure i mean they can still be they're still going to be congress people they're still going to they can still caucus in your, oh, look. your party or whatever they can vote okay they can vote on legislation they can vote their conscience or whatever but and and look they're citizens that they can go on fox if they want to have them on but you got to take them off the committees you got to take away their power you got to make it where they just show up and vote they you you've got to neutralize them look you know? look who we've got here mm -hmm. There's, there's Adrian. Yeah. Oh, Adrian. Yeah. Hi, Adrian. How you doing? Isn't it your birthday, Adrian? Yeah, birthday, yeah. When hey, is come it? here. Come here or get out. <laughs> See, I don't influence her at all, and she just happens to like the Eagles, too. So. When's your birthday? Uh -huh. Tomorrow. Yeah, Tomorrow. We, know how, we know how dads Tomorrow? like to influence their okay, children. Okay, everybody together. I do it, too. Happy birthday <laughs> to <laughs> you. <laughs> Happy birthday <laughs> to <laughs> you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, dear Adrian. 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 Even Happy she's birthday, birthday fan. to you. She doesn't Tell Daddy to get you something good. <laughs> hey, that says? No cowboy. Yeah, I know. No cowboy. <laughs> good for you. The eagle fans cheat the injury. Bye. Bye, Adrian. Oh, boy. But, you know, I, yeah. I think that they would make the offer that the Democratic Party would do it. But, I mean, but they've got to be assured before you're going to neutralize these people. And we are going to agree that if we do it, we're going to pass a budget. Do you think they would mind? From the government? Do you think you they know? would mind neutralizing them? I don't think so. Oh, yeah. Well, that, I think that's the problem. I mean, the Republicans won't, don't seem to be able to do it. I mean, the, I, I don't know why. They, they, I mean, 
I mean, that's what I'm saying. They they, they were all afraid of something. Re- I mean, they were afraid of something. They could reach something. a deal and solve everybody's problem but about eight or nine people, and they won't do it. Yep. Because they're only on vote number three. They still got like 12 more to yeah, go. Yeah, 12 more right? votes. <laughs> Jeez, they think it's nothing. Right. So. But, I mean, if they did that, at the end of the day, Democrats would be happy and Republicans would be happy except about eight or nine people. And they're I, I don't get it. I, I mean... Personally, because, I mean, I think they could do it and they could all go out and proclaim that, you know, we did something that's really never done. We, we, we did. We chose a speaker this way. We work with Democrats. You know, we had a bipartisan speaker. Look, Ooh. you know, in the next three or four weeks, you're, you're not going to hear about a government shutdown. We're, we're taking care they of it. They might get gonna, used um, to it. They might get used to it and like it. Well, it's possible. It's, you know. But I mean, you know, they'll say we're going to, we're going to, we're, you know, look, we've been getting on Democrats for a long time about some of this border stuff. They've agreed to give us all this money and measures for border security. And then we're going to fund, you know, Israeli defense operations mm-hmm. and assistance. We're, we're going to continue helping the Ukrainians. I mean, we're, we're taking care of major legislation all before the end of the year. Because we all got together and we made a decision. We got these crazy people out of our caucus. They're not going to be, you know, in our way anymore. I mean, why don't they? Do, I mean, that's, that's you know. Well, you would the clown you, show. Yeah, and you right. would get some Democrats to go along with that. J- just get I mean, the crazy. I Congress, I would. Yeah, just get the crazy side of that. Because even if I wasn't for all of this border stuff, and even if I thought some of it was, you know, what, I, I would say... But that's very important to them, and they're willing to give me things that are very important to me. Mm-hmm. And that's called governing. That's the way the government's you know? supposed to work, right? Right. That's the way it I used mean, to work. I mean, you know, don't get me wrong. You can't give up principled things such as, well, if you let me take away black people's right to vote, I'll give you this. No, I mean, that's not a deal, right? But, I'm, but I mean, on policy things, you know, it's, mm-hmm. you know... And then they can go out and say, look what we did, look what we did for all their people. And then Democrats can go out and say, hey, look what we did for all their people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, life would go on and then we'd have an election. <laughs> like we're supposed to. Yeah. But we're not, I mean, they can't really even run the lunchroom at the Capitol, <laughs> right? I mean, you know, yeah. I, you know I don't know what to do. <laughs> I mean, they're just not... They can't even bag the groceries. I mean, I don't know how... I don't know how long, much longer it goes on. I mean, I don't know. Before these people say, I'm a regular Republican or whatever, and you are just going to start hampering my ability to raise money, to get reelected, to to do the things that I need to do for my district, like make sure this particular manufacturing plant gets built here or this you know tax abatement i mean you know things that are important that the daily stuff you know i, I mean uh well if i were america I, i've been fighting to get that 50 mile stretch of the interstate repaved i mean if i know. were america i would be pissed i would just be pissed and this is not this is clearly not the democrats fault did you hear that they talked, somebody said, I saw this on Jimmy Kimmel, I saw the quote, some, some Republicans said, well, you know, the fact that we couldn't come up with somebody uh, for a speaker is all the Democrats' fault. Yeah. What? Sure. Sure. How is it the Democrats' fault? Doesn't make sense to me. Nonsense. I you know, the know. only, you know, you can't blame anything on the Democrats in this deal, you know. Yeah, they all voted for the same person. Yeah. Yeah. They've got it together. They agree. Yeah. And believe me, if the shoe was on the other foot and we had a majority in Congress and now they were looking for a speaker of the House who was a Democrat, they'd get one in five minutes. Right. You know, I think Hakeem Jeffries would be their guy. Sounds right? like it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they could strike some kind of deal, but... All of it is up to Republicans. I mean, it, the the two hundred of them basically just need to get together and just say, Matt Gates and 
Nancy Mace and Marjorie Taylor Greene and the four or five others are going to go in a box in the corner. Yeah. Like a and then the rest of us are going to go do our thing. We're and putting you, or no, we're putting you. And in they can go on Twitter and say, I voted no, and they can do all that stuff all they want, but it ain't going to matter. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know. And the Democrats would put them over the top for somebody. Right. I mean, yeah. That, I mean, that's what I'm saying. And all they're looking for is assurance. Now, now let me just ask you this question, okay, Josh? What are the chances of that happening? <laughs> I really don't know. I mean, you would think slim, but the problem is they're on a path where it's becoming a damn near their only option. Yeah. To be honest with you. I mean, that's what these people don't understand by holding out is that, you know, the Matt Gateses and all of them is that they may get their little victory uh, that is going to be so costly for them in the end. You know, I mean... Like a general once remarked, you know, a few more victories mm-hmm. like that. No, let me this war. let me ask you how many how many here now got a chance to hear either part or all of Biden's speech? I heard some. Huh? I heard how do how do you think he came off in that speech? I think he was okay. I mean, I think he came out good. Point. Yeah. I think he came out good. I think he he made his case perfectly on why we have to worry about these two different fronts, Israel and Ukraine, and why we have to give them money. When was he on? I think it was last night, wasn't it? Last night, yeah. Night before. Eight o'clock. Yeah, it was last, last night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, I thought it was a very good speech. I, I, you know, and how do you think that the whole thing, the way he's handling handling the Israeli situation is going to affect his abilities to win next year uh, do you think it, do you think it's upping his stock do you that. think he's going to get better uh, approval ratings now because of the way he's handled this um i don't i don't know i don't know if it'll make that much difference positively um uh, maybe some mm-hmm. uh i don't think it'll have any negative effect i think if it does make any positive it'll be a slight bit Amongst a group of people who says, man, you know, if this stuff were happening and Trump were in there, he's a little unpredictable, a little stupid, a little wild. Um, listen oh, you would not folks. want I Trump. be maybe ner- more nervous. I mean, yeah. I'm talking about, like, independent-minded voters. You would not want Trump to be handling this situation in Israel. No, I wouldn't. Or, or the one in Ukraine. Oh, he would have gave, he would have, he would have gave Putin the country. Yeah, he no would. He would have. He would have killed the funds and given the country. To yeah, pay. I don't even think he would have given the funds because they weren't part of NATO. Ukraine. He would have been like, "Oh, you're on your own," and he would have. That would have been his payback for Putin. Hey, you can have it. Neither is Israel, though. I know, but Israel's our only uh, allegiance down there. Well, he he doesn't like Israel now. He doesn't mm-hmm. like Netanyahu because Netanyahu said something negative about. Yeah, him he said he gave. Oh, a so now he's on the shit list. Okay. Yeah, just like uh, that, like everybody else. Like personal, yeah. We're good friends. Yeah, and now you. <laughs> it's it's not looking friends. too good for Trump in uh, in uh, Georgia. Oh, Alex, two of the guys flipped. I know. In Georgia, I was okay. just reading. Yeah. Two of them flipped. Well, we were talking about that earlier. Yeah. Oh, okay, I didn't hear in the beginning. I yeah. mean, I think Biden's speech was well done, and he didn't, you know, have any, you know, trouble or stutters or anything that I heard about, you know. And I mean, it was smooth and I think people can respect it and I think they know these are big issues but I think most people can understand that you know it is important to prop up democracy and fight well, you've got to realize like that around that the world part of his election pitch has to include the fact that he went to Ukraine and to Israel during wartime yeah, sure. right. you know I think that's. I think it's going to play pretty well, you well, know. I mean, you know, it's just that we're not. We're, you know. Uh, yeah, he should just. There's nothing wrong with saying I'm not an isolationist. I think we should be involved in these things, and here's why. And if you don't like that, well. You know. Well, he's just saying in the long run, it's good for us. 
it is. You know that you know. Do you want to you want to just ignore these two fronts and not to help them at all, and then have to pay the price later on down the road, yeah. or would you rather yeah. stop you, it right here and them, now? Yeah. Do you want them to become more powerful and then make an agreement right. with China, for example? Yeah. Now today, yeah, today front. Hamas let go two of the uh, prisoners, two of the oh, hostages. Um, yeah. Uh, do you think they just did this to? get on the good side of people, or what do you think was their thinking on this? Or is this the beginning of it, and they're going to start... I think they're going to release the rest of them, Alex. I think I they... don't. I don't. I no, think they're gonna no they're, they're are, are, there's word that Hamas is thinking of letting them all go. Yeah, why would they let them go? Are they, were they kids, or what? I didn't hear No, about they were the, the mother and the daughter. The 17-year-old right. okay. daughter and the mother. Yeah. And uh, they looked a little worse for wear. They looked tired. They didn't look... Act they didn't look beat up or anything, but they looked tired. Actions speak better than words. Why not release them today? They did release them today. I'm not talking about the two. I'm talking about the rest of them. Well, because I don't think they want to do it all at once. They want some assurances on the other side that they're not going to be put in a vulnerable situation. You know, I mean, it's all negotiation. But they say that out of the 200 or some that were taken, 80% mm -hmm. are still alive. Well, we'll see. I mean, that, there will be no negotiation if it were. I mean, you know, the That's terms right. of surrender are unconditional. Yep. You know, and, and they say that they're uh, they're all. They say they're being taken care of, so that they're you know healthy sure. and. Most of them. I mean, they get extra credit for you know. Yeah. Not not beating up people. They putting band aids on them and send right. them home and. Excellent. They're I'm gonna blow the shit out of you. Get on your. Uh, Rape the women. Program. Yeah. yeah. But you know, it, it's going to be in, it's going to be interesting to see how this thing plays itself out. Whether they're going to let more go in the next couple of days and so on. But uh, these two people seem to be okay. They just the the seventeen year old looked uh, looked tired, and the other and the mother did, looked even worse. Actually, the mother didn't look worse. The daughter was the one that looked beat up. Not like she was beaten up physically, but beaten up emotionally, you know. Well, I mean, I'm sure it's not. Well, it has to be scary. You think you're going to be killed. Yeah. Well, you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, that's you know? right. That's uh, right. But you are a hostage, and so therefore you have some worth to them. Okay. Sure, yeah. So, you know. And, and, I mean, you know. And an American free to do it. Hmm? They would and then, to do. But, yeah. I mean, they're, you know. I think Hamas that. is a little nervous about what America is going to do. They got two warships sitting out in the med right now with uh, planes on them, and they're a little worried. Yeah, about but it, let's them. face it. How, no, how are they going to get to them? I, 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 don't, I, I, yeah. I don't think we're, I don't think we're going to make the mistake that Israel is making by continually bombing this area, and not and and not knowing what you're going to hit. I think that today they hit. Did they hit a church? I think today. I know they did like, hit some of the herd. Yeah, they hit they it like a church. Yeah. You don't want to do that. You know, you yeah, don't want to be as bad as the the guys you're going after. You know, just out of revenge. Uh, it's easier for you to be moderate, have moderation, and and deal with it in specific little baby steps because you know. You don't want to be you don't want to be the kind of people that you're fighting. It just doesn't work. I think the Israelis should turn the power back on, their water back on, and medical at, at, for humanitarian. Oh, reasons. absolutely, absolutely. You know? Yeah. So. And then continue to bomb them. Well, but if you continue to bomb them, you're going to bomb. You're going to kill civilians. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. It, it didn't stop Hamas from killing. Somebody. Well, I think uh, the the yeah, Israeli. Yeah, let's all be like Hamas. Yeah, let's all be let's be mm -hmm. just like Hamas. Then we're just like they are. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. not very smart. You no. know. No. Uh, Coming yeah. from an old cop. Yeah. 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 Shoot first, ask questions later. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I, I want to shoot the wrong guy. <laughs> I wasn't even here. Yeah. <laughs> shoot everybody and ask later. That's anyway, true. hey Charlie. Yes. I'll have to go bowling next time I see you. Okay. Oh, come on. 
Is there bowling on the on the cruise ship that you're taking us all on, Alex? Is there bowling? Sometimes have bowling out. Some cruise ships have bowling. I'm inviting you to join us on the cruise ship. We're not taking all of you. Oh, what about the villa you're renting? Can you can you rent a villa with a bowling alley in it? Now the the villa is a different story. You know. But anyway, hey, uh, thank you very much, Brian. Nice having you here. Josh, always a pleasure. Uh, Alan, you've been fun tonight. Uh, and, uh, uh, of course, uh, I always enjoy uh, 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 Kevin. He's terrific. And Tony, Tony, how, how nice to see you tonight. Anyway, mm -hmm. everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, and we'll just say call it a night, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. There'll be one more citizen panel this week. It's coming up next on the Jack Bishop intersection. I'll see you again on Monday. We're going to be uh, doing the pop-up show. That'll be on Facebook live. And then uh, uh, we'll see you again on, uh, let's see here, Wednesday. Oh, yeah, Wednesday we'll do another ramble. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, whoops, as always... <laughs> If you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.